in order to complete today's lesson, you need to have this worksheet. So this is on page three of your 20.1 study guide packet. If you haven't gotten that packet yet, you need to request, request to have that packet. Okay, so in image one, what I want you to do is I want you to draw in the charges for both the cloud and the ground. And as you're drawing them in, what you should notice is that both the cloud and the ground are considered to be neutrally charged. Um, they have the same number of positive charges as they have negative charges. Now, if you need to at this point, pause the video and then unpause it when you're ready to continue going. And we're going to do this a couple times throughout the video. There'll be opportunities where you need to do some writing, so make sure you pause it to do that writing. Now on the left side, what you need to do is you should be writing down charges throughout the cloud and ground are neutral. Basically, the left side of the page is describing what's happening on the images on the right side. So again, if you need to take some time to write this down, you want to pause it. So let's take a look at what's actually happening inside of the cloud. So inside the cloud, what you can see is that as particles cool down and they freeze, they become less dense. So the snowflakes or the ice is going up as they become less dense. They're going to the top of the cloud. The heavier raindrops are falling towards the bottom of the ground. So as these two are going on, as one's going up and the other is going down, sometimes they strike each other. When they strike each other, friction occurs. And as we know, friction is a method of charging. So as we can see, the snowflakes, as they go up, get a positive charge. As the raindrops go down, they get a negative charge. So on your paper, what I want you to do is I want you to draw in arrows. And you should have an arrow for the snowflake showing that it is going up because it's less dense and an arrow on a water droplet showing that it's going down. Alright, so what's really happening here, if we look at the bigger picture, alright, we're taking a look just up in the cloud. Watch what happens to the charges as one's going up and one's going down. We have positives forming in the top of the cloud, we have negatives forming in the bottom of the cloud, and notice the ground at this point is remaining neutral. Same number of positives as negatives. So here's what we should write. Particles become charged through friction when they collide. The more dense rain particles become negatively charged and the less dense snow particles become positively charged. This creates a separation of charge in the cloud. Again, pause this if you need some time to write it down. Then unpause it when you're ready to move on. All right, so in number three, if we look in the cloud, we now have a lot of positives at the top of the cloud. We have a lot of negatives in the bottom of the cloud. Well, something's going to happen to the ground. Once we get a lot of negatives in the, bottom of the, in the bottom of the cloud, watch what happens to the ground. All right, I'll show you again. The negatives within the ground actually become repelled. Here it comes again. And as they get repelled, the very top of the ground is left with this positive charge. So number three, you want to show the following. You want to show a lot of positives in the top of the cl cloud, a lot of negatives in the bottom of the cloud, and then the top of the ground being positively charged. Pause it to give yourself some more time. Now let's write about number three. The neutrally charged ground separates its positive and negative charges. This occurs through induction. The negative charges from the cloud repel the negative charges in the ground, leaving the top of the ground positively charged. Again, pause this to give yourself some more time, and then unpause it when you're ready to go. 
All right, so finally, here's what we're left with. Positively charged ground, negatively charged cloud in the bottom, and a positively charged cloud at the very top. We know that electrons always going to go from high concentration to low concentration. At this point, there's a high concentration in the cloud and a very low concentration in the ground. Watch what takes place. Lightning takes place, called static discharge, in which the electrons move from high concentration to the low concentration ground. You want to take some time, you want to draw this in. You want to draw in that static discharge with all the charges. Let's see what we should write about number four. A potential difference is created between the cloud and the ground. Negative charges in the cloud are attracted to positive charges in the top of the ground. Electrons move to the ground through static discharge, also called lightning. Negative electrons from the cloud are released through the lightning to the ground. Now when you're done writing this today, what I want you to do is I want you to log off your computer, put your headphones away, and I want you to work on, for the remainder of the period, 20.1 study guide. And whatever you don't finish on 20.1 study guide is your homework tonight.